In this tutorial we're going to learn what currying and uncurrying is. Uh, these are operations which are very important in functional programming but also every COC user should know them. And we're also going to learn a little bit about equality in COC. Equality in fact I think it's the most complicated concept in COC. So suppose we have, oops, I have to open a file first. There we go. Suppose we have sets A, B, and C. So I'm going to go pretty slowly here, but I'm assuming that you already know how to type things into cock and you know what this blue stuff here means. Namely that cock has accepted this. So this is how you tell cock that you're assuming that there are three sets A, B, and C. Now, if I have a function from A cross B to C, then that's a function of two arguments. But in cock, people would never write it that way. So, you have a function f from a cross b to c, then it's actually equivalent to a function of this form. And it's the second notation that I think is more unusual for mathematicians, but it's what gets used in cock. So let us explain what this is. Here, this says, well, f takes an argument, which is an ordered pair of an A and a B, and it returns C. And this here says that we have something which takes an A, and then it returns a function, so you should read it this way. It takes an A, and then it returns a function which takes a B, and then finally it gives you C. Now, to see that these guys are equivalent, let us, define an op let us define operations which convert between the two forms and then show that they are inverses of each other. The operation, in fact, is called currying. So now I have to, now I'm defining a function called curry, which takes a function as an argument, and now I have to produce another function. So this other function takes an A, takes a B, and then it returns simply FAB like this. The opposite operation takes a pair and then it returns G applied to the first component of the pair applied to the second component of the pair. So now we would like to show that the curry of the uncurry of F is f. Let me show you what happens if you try to prove that. So I say well for all f curry uncurry let's get this right uncurry of curry of f equals f. Notice how I didn't have to explain the type of f, and that's because the type of curry is already known, and so Koch computed what the type of f must be. By the way, when you when you are in a proof like this, it's very convenient in proof general to print to, to type control C control P to see what the current goal is. Okay, so now we say well intro intro is a com is a tactic which takes the hype which takes the for all and any any uh, implications and makes assumptions out of them. So when I say intro or even intros, which will convert many, but we only have one here, what happens is that the for all f turned into, well, suppose we have an f, now show this. So many, many proofs start with intros. And in fact, COC 8.3 has an automatic intros feature, which when you start a proof, intros happens by itself. There are some details there which I'm not going to explain now. Anyhow, now what could we do here? Well, let's see. Well, let's unfold these two operations. Ah, I meant the definitions. Okay, so now we stare at this and 
turns out we're going to get stuck because there's simply nothing that you could do at this point. So this is not how you should prove that un curry of curry of f equals f. Now you, this looks very unreasonable for to a mathematician, but um, Cox's understanding of equality is stricter than what is usual in mathematics. So as far as Cox is concerned, the functions could be something like algorithms, and maybe we're sensitive to the running time or the memory used by f or anything like that. In which case, really wrapping f inside of curry and then uncurry is going to change the underlying f if you think of it as a piece of code. So it's unreasonable to assume that it's actually identical. But what does hold is that if I, ask, if I apply uncurry of curry to, of f to something, it should be the same as applying f. So we're going to fix this now. So I pressed Control c enter to, to, put, to put the uh, part accepted by cock to up here, and now I can change this. So I have to say for all f and for all a and b, if I apply this here, it's the same as applying there. So this says that uncurry and curry of f equals to f in an extensional way. This is called extensional equality. It says that two functions are equal in the sense that they return the same result given the same argument. So let's try now. So we do intros as before. So watch what happens here. Intros, so you see now we have f and you also have a and b. So now that we uncurry, we get something different. So now you would want to say, well, first of a and b, here we have first of a and b. Well, this is obviously a. So the way to do this, such things, is you say, you tell Cock to simplify the expressions with a simple tactic. And now, well, now there are many ways to finish this off. You could say auto, and then that's it. Or you could be more specific, say, well, this holds by reflexivity. And the proof is completed. So now at this point, you should formulate and prove as an exercise the other theorem, namely that the curry of uncurry of g is g in an extensional way. So this is a good way. Now stop this video and try to do the exercise yourself. And then when you're done or if you give up, continue with the video. Really you should stop.